guys welcome back to the channel we left off on the 07 i believe fuel limited we turned up the rail played around with it we ended at 1200 13 horsepower courtesy of our friend james again huge shout out to him staying late we finished at 11 30 our time which is like 1 30 his time so a lot of dedication i really do appreciate you man now we're here with the 05 sorry the 07 we think we are air limited. So, in my random box of you know what, we have the 05 single turbo. This is one of the power driven diesel aggressor 88s. Um, we've done over 1600 horsepower on spray with this. I believe like 13 something fuel only. So, if we truly are fuel limited, or sorry, air limited, a little bit bigger compressor wheel should help um kind of interested on this one if this doesn't seem to help um maybe it's the atmospheric turbo being the 467.7 with the 83 turbine is just the choke point but either way you know we got it should be pretty easy to swap because it's s 400 we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot so we are gonna go ugh, geez we're gonna go ahead and run this truck on the dyno tonight. Things change in a couple days. We drove the truck. This thing is so much fun now. Um, I normally, I've been driving it even harder than before. Uh, just, you know, why not? Um, yeah, I mean, this thing just does it all. I really am really pleased with how this build came. And everything just works good. We're gonna try to get some rust fix and stuff like that, but this thing has just been dependable. Like without a doubt. So without further ado, let's go ahead, run this thing on the dyno, just make sure we're at that. I mean, realistically, if we're close, if we're close to like 1200 horsepower, I'm just gonna let it let it go. Um, no sense in getting this thing smoking hot because I do have to change the turbo on it. So let's go get it done. First things first, we got to get the 05, ugh, man. The 07, holy cow guys, I am having a rough day of the day. There's the 07, we're gonna load that vehicle in there and we are ready to dyno. Just gotta change this because we moved it around for the cold bias dyno. Boom. Just flashing in a revision. Um, try to get a new baseline. Uh, James and I have went back to the 5.9 rail sensor um reason being the it's not good for long term the way we were running it so we're gonna go ahead back to the five nine sensor just for a little bit more durability remember guys i do drive this truck every day like i know the 05 is technically a street truck yada yada i actually do drive this truck like every day to work um i take my family in it I'm going on road trip with it so I do want to be careful of that so we went back down to the lower rail pressure um shouldn't be an issue at all we'll run it get our baseline i'm thinking two dyno poles and get our baseline number and while it's cooling off you know maybe film another video not sure and we'll get this all cleaned up it is kind of crusty so we'll get that cleaned up uh, and ready to go okay guys first pull we're gonna go two and five just to get our baseline. five nine rail sensor um or the six seven uh it just it wasn't working very well um we'll come back to that hopefully james gets a little bit more data from me i've been really bad about logs and we'll try to dial that in more but 1204 horsepower on the five nine rail sensor tune five i was thinking it was going to be high 11s maybe a low 12 so really happy that it stayed in the same spot 
We're gonna go ahead, hit it one more time just to make sure we have a good baseline. There's no funny business um, and see what it does. Here's another two and five rip to get the baseline. Let's go. Well, something isn't going right. We got a huge fuel leak. I'm not quite sure what happened. Maybe a line came loose. All I know it is hot and there is fuel everywhere. Good news is nobody's hurt, truck's fine. I was wondering what all that smoke was doing. So uh, 1187, these dyno runs were literally within a minute and a half of each other. So the heat soaks pretty accurate. You lose a little bit of power after a hot run. And since we ruptured something over here, um, dang, that sucks. I really hope, uh, really hope it's an easy fix. Like a line came loose or something like that. Okay, so we have found the leak. It's actually this uh, sensor right here. This 5.9 rail sensor must not have. Must not have gotten it fully seated or something. It is definitely leaking. There we go. That should hold. Go ahead. Colby, fire it up and uh, give it a little throttle. Since those two dyno poles were so close together, I mean, we did 1204, 1187. I'm gonna, we'll, we'll call that good. Um, I don't wanna get this truck any hotter because I already have to work on the turbo. So what we'll go ahead and do, let this cool off. We'll go ahead and start disconnecting some of the stuff. Basically, I'm not sure how the VS Racing turbos are, if they run a certain style turbine because you have the clipped and non-clipped. I'm hoping that our aggressor 88 will just drop in and I don't have to take the turbine housing off, but we shall see. Gonna go ahead and get this thing cleaned off. Again, like I've shown you guys before, just some brake clean in there, compressed air, gonna blow out where the um, oil goes as well. Make sure it's nice and fresh in there and then pre-lube it. I feel like the third dyno pull over 1200 horsepower and like 10 or 15 over a thousand. This thing still looks pretty good. Hanging in there mighty nicely having a little bit of clearance problems nothing an air hammer can't fix so stay tuned for that guys we ran into our first snag of the night the interstage pipe these sxe covers little thicker so what we're gonna do luckily shad was such a nice guy i harassed him uh, we had to clearance that a little bit but we got that taken care of um we're basically gonna cut the turbo here and weld this v-band flange on back here and that will allow us to hook it up all right so after a couple minutes with a scuzz brush we got this PDD turbo all cleaned up. We're gonna go ahead and get the center section installed since the VS Racing and our aggressor have the same style turbine. Just like I've, I feel like I preached to you guys before, but the S400, this is the main reason why I like the S400 platform because it's all V-bands. Not that the 300s don't have their place, but the V-band clamp. Very nice, very nice. Get this tightened up. Yeah. All right, so we got a feed line, drain line, center section. All we got left is the interstage. Um, Shad's gonna come and weld that up for us. 
we'll be ready to dyno. Right, so Shad was kind enough to weld this on. It did have quite a bit of oil on it, so I wouldn't say it's technically weld porn, but big jobs, right Shad? I always tighten the covers first because you don't want to accidentally pull the cover over. Then we'll tighten this V-band. So this filter, when we found out the compounds, clearly I made a couple clerical errors. One of them being the air filter. Oh, there we go. See, the best part about these power driven air filters, this cage just makes them pretty much indestructible. So we got our compound set up. Time to hit this thing on the dyno. Same tune up, same night literally about an hour apart i'm thinking 1250 well what's your guess my guess i think it's gonna be 1300 pick, you're gonna pick up 30 horse okay so my thinks 1234 you think 1304 i think 1254 i don't even know what the last one was 1204 1204 uh 40 horse what did so you make fuel only with that on the old sixth grade 1325 not on this dial. What's the most you made on this dyno fuel only with that turbo? Like 1125? Oh. Then you probably make more than that. You spec almost 12. Like, I think it's like 12 zero or something. Yeah. All right. Colby, what's your guess? 1199. Yeah. By the way, the boss was kind enough to be here tonight, so that's kind of cool. All right. So we got everybody's horsepower predictions. We're going to let this set up for a sec and see who's the closest. Okay guys, we have two and five, 488. First pull, we're not gonna change the dyno or anything. Daddy, 12.31. Okay guys, so it did 12.31 horsepower. That is a new best for the truck again. Didn't pick up any more torque, which is a good thing. We want to keep the block alive. Um, it made peak horsepower about 100 RPM later, uh, and it picked up 27 horsepower. For the time it took, that's really not bad. I mean, we're getting to that milking of the horsepower. So I'm extremely thrilled with this number and we're gonna drive it like this and see how it works all right guys so here's the two graphs the 1204 and the 1231 um the torque on engine speed was about 50 rpm later the horsepower peaked about 150 rpm later and if you look at it over time just a little bit slower, about a quarter of a second. So as far as drivability goes, we didn't lose much, which I didn't expect to. But uh, moving the torque over, moving the horsepower over, those are all good things for reliability. Not quite what I thought it was going to do, but we have a new personal best. And the truck still runs. To wrap up this video, we learned a little bit. We picked up 27 horsepower with the 488, no tuning changes. No funny business, I promise. Same air filter, same night, same dyno. Didn't even unstrap it. Um, not quite the power I thought we were gonna get. I really think either the 96 turbine is choked or probably the 83 turbine is choked. We might, I got a road trip coming up, so I don't know if I'm gonna mess with it, but I do wanna try and put maybe a bigger turbine on the manifold, get an 87 turbine in there. I'm just really hesitant with the way it ran as a single, I would assume in compounds, it's still gonna be kind of slow to spool, which isn't enjoyable to drive. 
uh, on a 5.9 truck. 6.7, it would probably work just fine. Um, yeah, 12.31, a new personal best for the truck. It still runs, life is good. Hopefully you guys like this video. Make sure you subscribe. We're, like I said, more content, more content, more content. And uh, leave a comment what you think. I'll catch you guys on the next one.